بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هذا بيان للناس وهدى وموعظة للمتقين This should be a clear lesson unto all men and a guidance and an admonition unto the God conscious. Next translation. This is a clear statement to mankind. It is a guidance and instruction to those who are mindful of God. Yeah. And, and we could say that because the word bayan is usually translated like, uh, like a manifesto. This is a declaration or open declaration or manifesto to all mankind. And it's a guidance and it's admonishment or advice for those who are conscious or, or for, for those who are conscious of Allah. That's the one translation of Muntaqeen. And the other one we said, oh, picture is not a bad one, it's more literal, those who ward evil, those who protect themselves from evil. And there's no way to protect yourself from evil except to be aware about evil, aware about God and how to protect yourself. So this translation of picture is also a nice one, which is almost literal because Muntaqeen is the one who protects himself. A taqa, avoiding, a taqwa, avoiding, avoiding evil, avoiding uh, protecting yourself from evil in an active action, not, not just, just passive, but actively. Anyway, uh, that's uh, what is this hada? What is this manifesto? It is what uh, the, 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 that, that specific part of revelation. The previous one, which is say there have been, there have been uh, 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 rules of, of society and rules of, of history before. Uh, so uh, go in the earth around and see what was the result of the, the one who denied the truth. So. Uh, so that part and also what comes after that, this is the manifesto. It's not a communist manifesto. It is the Quranic manifesto. And what's it? And then it comes with with the uh, well, going back now to, uh, as you say, the Quran made an intermezzo after starting with with the battle of Uhud and certain issues. Then suddenly went over to the issue of usury and the pollution of usury and the admonishment to leave this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the other other general in, in, uh, in instructions and admonishment, which are in, in the previous video. And then concluded that this is a manifesto to mankind and so on. But it, the manifesto continue. But actually, it is more, most likely the, the main emphasis on the previous part, which has these general instructions. The next part is then addressing the people uh, who have suffered the defeat in Uhud. Translate this one. Be not then faint of heart and grieve not, for you are bound to rise high if you are truly believers. Yeah. Next translation, do not, dis do not lose heart or despair. You will overcome if you are believers. Yeah, because a believer, by virtue of his belief, is connected spiritually and mentally with the source of, of, of existence, the source of power in the universe, Allah SWT. So he's a true believer. He's always superior even in the time of calamity, even if he looks, people look that he's downtrodden, he's being beaten, he's in prison, he is still supreme because he is connected to and the other op opposing part who may have defeated him or caused him harm or imprisoned him are not connected. If the conflict is based on that, if the conflict is based on issues of dunya, and I owe you money, you don't owe me money, that says Allah has nothing to do with that, settle that between yourself. But if the conflict, like in Uhud uh, and the defeat, uh, then, then, uh, then the believer should not feel lowly or grief because they are, if they are true believer, they are the supreme one, and ultimately they will prevail. Next, in Yamsaskum Karhun, Fakad Master Kauma Karhun Mithil, what you carry on the Willow Habay the Nas, Walla and Allah Ladina Amanu, where it takes the Minkum Shuhada, Wallah Hula, you have Bob Valimin. If misfortune touches you, know that similar misfortune has touched other people as well, for it is by turns that we have portion unto men such days of miss of fortune and misfortune and this to the end that god uh, might mark out those who have attained to faith and choose from among you such as with their lives bear witness to the truth since god does not love evildoers next translation if you have been wounded know that the other side has been similarly wounded we alternate alternate such days between people so god may know those who believe and to choose and to choose from among them some who with their lives will bear witness to the truth. God does not love the unjust. Yeah. There's some remarks, of as a general rule, they have suffered some, hard, some hardship and defeat and okay. But why you are amazed, the other side also suffered. In a battlefield, both sides will suffer. If, if you're independent of victory or no victory, do you think that you will be going to a battlefield against the enemies of God and disbeliever, and they are only the one who suffer death and, and pain and so on, and you will come out unscathed? That's, a, that's irrational, that's not possible. So they have also suffered, especially in the beginning of the battle, they suffered considerable losses. 
and then the battle situation then because of certain things which will be discussed later. So you have to take that into consideration. That's how, how the universe works. So this is natural and to be expected in battlefield and confrontation. You know, it's irrational to think that you will come completely unscathed and the other side is the one who will suffer everything. That's irrational. And also the matter of being defeated and, uh, and not defeated, that, that is, that's changed between the people. These days, day of victory and defeat, are, are Allah turns in between the people. Sometimes you are victorious, sometimes you are defeated. It's never, it's never uh, in one way. Never. It has to go up and down. That's the way of the, the universe is fashioned. And also, so that Allah, the second translation, the correct one, says, you know, no, because the other one said, Mark, he's trying to run in a way, in a way that, Allah, that Allah will know, because this may hint that Allah does not who are the believer after the test, who are the same believer after the test, and only the test will show who is a believer or non-believer. And they thought this contradicts Allah's, uh, 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 Allah's uh, 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 omniscience or comprehensive knowledge. It doesn't contradict. That's because they have a a concept of qadr, a concept of previous knowledge, which is false, which is the prevalent one, which led essentially to a theory of qadr and qadr, which is essentially fatalism. But this is a very deep and complex issue. I have discussed that, I think. I th did I discuss it in English in some occasion? You have discussed it in some halakas. Uh, Previously here and in other places. So that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So these, these things would depend upon, upon free will. Even if limited free will of humans under the free agents, the result of the free will is unknowable, impossible to know in advance. And this is by Allah's, but it's completely under Allah control. The future is completely under Allah control, but, and he creates the future and he created the universe so that these free agents are capable to make their own destiny. And it's unknowable in advance. Otherwise it will not be a free will. It's impossible to be unknown. And this applies also in a higher level to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think what, what will he do in the future unless he has committed to do something because of prophecy or because of commitment to himself to believers or things like that. That can change also, except that what he had already committed and cannot be changed. It's a very complex issue we have discussed, I think, uh, extensively and also in, 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 in the, in the uh, rational theism club will we'll get to that after some uh, some future halakas when we finish the issues of of uh, principle of sufficient reason which was yesterday and then when we finish the issue of infinite egress and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the issues of uh, the possibilities of explanation and, and, uh, and justification and things like that then we will see that this is the correct point of view it does not it does not contradicts Allah uh, being omniscience or Allah's perfection and completeness. It is, it is a necessity of Allah's attribute being consistent and Allah being al haqq in himself, not a contradictory, non-existing entity. But that's very deep. So, But the second translation is honest. That, that Allah may know, because the word used in Arabic, يعلم الله. So that Allah may know those who are really sincere believer and not munafiq, or those who will persist and believe after the calamity. It's another purpose that he wants to take from you some martyrs, some who will witness for the truth because of their death. That's the, that's the reason the word martyr in Arabic is witness, called witness. The, the, we don't have a specific word called martyr, like in, in, in English or Latin or something like that. Uh, in Arabic, a martyr is a shaheed. Why is called his witness? Because he's witnessing for the truth by his own life. That's called shaheed. minkum shuhada. And I think I mentioned, but I, I will mention it quickly now. But that, and then Allah concludes, Allah does not love the, the wrong, the wrong doer. That's a fundamental principle of the universe. Mm -hmm. He has prohibited himself from any wrongdoing, and he does not love the wrong doer. But let's go. I think I mentioned that once. It is actually what uh, uh, the, the, the seventy who has had been murdered that is actually has been already decided after Badr. I remember I gave you maybe a summary of Badr in Badr. Let me give you a quick summary in Badr. After the battle, they have prisoners of war. And there was already a revelation of sort. That's, that's the problem with many scholars with the, because they do not take that into consideration. They don't read the Quran from cover to cover, or they rely on some obscure na narratives from Ibn Abbas or otherwise that Surah Muhammad was revealed in the sixth year, which is utter nonsense. Even part of it is in the sixth year, the beginning of it is even before Baqarah and before Badr, which says clearly. If you meet a disbeliever, then strike their neck. But if you do it khan, if you have made a, sometimes it's not just if you have made a massacre in the land, if you have if you have if you had killed from them such such a way that they are their back is broken, it khan, 
they are unable after that to uh, rise and, and fight again and cause mischief, then you, you, can, you can take prisoners of war, not before. Yeah, that injunction is before. Now, after the battle, the messenger will ask them to give them a consultation about the issue. The narrative of the consultation are very, very, very short and very unexpressive, which makes even the, 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 the matter for the analyst a little bit difficult. It doesn't say clearly that he asked them for that. Uh, the, it doesn't mention the question he asked about what, what, what he about consulting about. He, uh, he gives their answer. The answer was the following. Uh, uh, Abu Bakr said, these are our families and relatives, et cetera, et cetera. And, and this, uh, Abu, Abu Bakr motivation was, was because of his merciful nature, not because he, he's, he's, he's giving preference of relatives and the Quraysh over anybody else. And I see we can take them prisoner for and possibly exchange them for, for a ransom. Omar said, no, I disagree with Abu Bakr. Give me, the, give me uh, uh, those who belong to Bani Adi, this is next cousin. Give them to me, I will strike the neck in front of you now. So I'm not talking the tough way. And the majority of the people, especially the Ansar, they say, yeah, it's better to take the prisoner of war. My, my, my con firm conviction, the Prophet himself asked them, what should we do to the people in the sense, did we have Ithkhan? Is that what happened to Quraysh enough as an Ithkhan? Is it enough? Because Ithkhan is something to be evaluated as a reality. What's Ithkhan? It can differ from situation to situation. In the battle of, 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 of Badr, I think 70 of the Mushrikeen were killed. That's 7%. Someone could say this may be Khan. Some say, no, 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 Quraysh will be back, will not be broken until they lose maybe a third of their people. Then they will come to their senses. They were not able to rise again. Anyway, that's a matter of evaluation, matter of military judgment, of an analysis of the battlefield, analysis of, of, of economic and, and personal strength, all of these things. And also depend upon who have been killed. Are there substantial people, real warriors and so on, who are really the, the spinal cord of the army, or just scattered people and few leaders? That's all of great importance. They give the wrong advice because they are the people who know war and the people who call the the, the, the the fact that something is Khan or not is an evaluation of the fact. It's not, an, it's not a based on revelation from heaven. If the heaven told him this is not Ifkhan to it, he would have uh, not uh, take any consultation. But it was not revealed. Left to him to judge according to the battle. And this is left to every leader, Muslim leader in history until Yom Qiyamah. That's it. And that's the way it should work until Yom Qiyamah to evaluate what's Ifkhan. So most likely because of the desire of the ransom, the ransom was very delicious. 10 dinar, 10 dinar is a substantial money and so on. And it was more for, for rich people, etc. The ransom was quite delicious. So instead of giving the right advice according to the best conviction or to the best point of view, and, then, and especially the Ansar are expert in war, they were just came from a civil war where they're killing each other for several years. So they know what's the meaning of Ithkhan, what's what's what break the back of a tribe, what doesn't break. They should have applied that here. They suggested also the majority suggested taking the ransom. And the decision was made to take the ransom. Now, Omar narrates that he went next day to the Messenger of Allah because he stayed in the battle after the battle for three days there in the place and found the Prophet and Abu Bakr crying, weeping. He said, why are you crying? Tell me what the reason. If it, is, if it makes me cry, I will cry clearly. If it doesn't make me cry, I'll force myself to cry so I can join you with the, in the grief. The Prophet said, I saw the punishment of all these people the fire coming from heaven, going all the way up to this tree, and they supplicated to Allah to stop it. And Allah said, no. They gave the wrong advice. They did not advise the, the, the messenger honestly. This is the Badri, by the way. I'm talking about the Badr, the best of all generation and nations. And because they have the desire for the money, so they don't give the objective device, advice. And Allah, and Allah supplicated to Allah, okay, we have 70 taken prisoner of war. Say, I must punish at least kill 70 from them for the 70 which have been decided to be taken uh, uh, for ransom to be released against ransom instead of being killed as they should have been. And the Messiah will ask Allah, sir, okay, as a mercy from you, make their, their punishment with death a shahada. Allah said, okay, I will make it also a shahada. It's a punishment for this bad advice, but it's a harder for them the same. And this is the 70 of Uhud, exactly the 70, which is one mercy than Uhud. And the, and the fire retreated back and was lifted. And Sajjah said to, uh, to uh, Omar, 
uh, if the punishment has come, only those who advised against taking the ransom would have survived. Everyone else would have been annihilated, except the prophet, because the prophet relied on the advice. And, uh, the, and he is, uh, is obliged to take the advice of the expert, uh, and, and the majority advice was clear. And it turns out they didn't advise sincerely and honestly. And that was the reason for this punishment. So the, the one killed in, in Uhud are really the punishment for Badr. So this, this is a wake up call for many people who go overboard and think the Sahaba like angel, they never intended to have dunya or never get preference for money. That happened in Badr and happens in Uhud. We come to Uhud also. Same thing, same thing in Uhud. It happens to everyone and even to the best of generation. Human weakness is there everywhere. And this gives us a lesson in the other direction, which I'll mention, inshallah, later. And the of us made, 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 made a certain, uh, a very interesting comment. Uh, he said, uh, uh, yeah, the example of you, Abu, uh, Umar is, uh, the, Abu Bakr, is the, uh, the example of you, Umar, is the example of Jibreel. Jibreel is always advising or suggesting toughness. And the example of you, Abu Bakr, is the example of Mikhail, Michael, the archangel. Michael always suggests softness, gentleness. But because both have suggested that on, 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 on sincere ground, based with the very best judgment, so in earth, there are these two, or one is suggesting toughness most of the time, and in heaven, then he compared that to in heaven, and in heaven, these two suggesting, obviously Allah does not need their suggestion, but he's, still he asks them to, give, to lift up their spirits. In this case, no, Allah does not need it. So, so, uh, so the, uh, uh, Gabriel, Jabriel, uh, always suggests toughness, or almost always, and Michael always suggests harshness, uh, gentleness. And they make a strange, a strange, a strange remark. And both are right. Both are right. This is right, and this is right. Because from a limited being with a limited vision and angle of visibility, this one is right in his own, this right in one in his own. And Allah judge according to what he, what he wants. That's the absolute uh, correct decision, the Allah's decision. But this is right and this is right. And this is not, it's, 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 it's nothing bad in that one is, is, is more tough and or Allah created him to be like that and the other one created to be gentle and soft. It's not, nothing wrong with that. This act according to his nature and make a suggestion, but honest suggestion. And this make a honest suggestion. Uh, that's all the, a nice example given to, sh to show that, that, that uh, it's not necessarily that uh, the one who advised strictness and is, is the correct one and the other one is wrong. No, they could be wrong. Everyone in his own angle. The ultimate decision, if it's done by Allah SWT, it's the absolute correct one. If it is not done by Allah SWT, then we don't know based on this suggestion. And what's objectively, that may be exposed sometimes by other realities. Maybe in the case of Badr, it was the wrong, it was the wrong advice and it was not given honestly. It was not with you that the, the one, the majority who uh, suggested to, to, uh, to take them prisoner of war and exchange them for ransom instead of executing them, uh, that is did it sincerely because the condition of with Khan has been fulfilled because the Khan is there clear in Surah Muhammad. They didn't know. And the Quran mentioned that uh, later in, uh, in, in another place in Surah Al-Anfal. It's not befitting for a messenger to have prisoners of war until he has made it Khan in Ard. And that's what they missed and they failed on. So that's the, uh, uh, that's. Now the decision of Messenger Allah, obviously because of this hadith, was the wrong one because of the wrong advice, not because he's wrong. But Messenger Allah is not a divine being. So his decision is not above every, every, uh, every, uh, uh, every reproach. The decision of Allah uh, responding to any suggestion from Jibreel and Mikael is the absolute one. That's the difference. That's, that's the difference. But his decision is completely honest and based on accepting the advice of the ones who are supposed to be sincere advisor. Anyway, back to, to Badr, uh, to Uhud. So these shuhada are actually, the Quran you know, mentioned that, but they take the shuhada, these are the shuhada exactly in retribution for that what has happened in Badr. So that's, that's just a side, a side remark, but it's interesting to connect these things because these things are connected. Some many people, especially the issue of what happened in Badr is completely almost gone, gone uh, in the oblivion of the mind of most people. That's barely you find it anywhere mentioned. And that's the reason I, I, I thought it is essential to mention it even as, a, as an appendix to one of the chapters of the book Tawheed, I think chapter three. But in the translation, I think the translators Khalid and so on decided 
this is for the English audience is not of the such great relevance. So this may become in the end of the book then as one of the ultimate help, but it is maybe not befitting in the first volume for some reason or another. I think it's a good decision. I don't think it's a bad decision because it's a very odd specific case, uh, which, uh, which uh, but for, for, for the Arabic speaker and the one who are following Islamic history and literature is very important, especially when you read the exposition of Tabari about this issue in his, and uh, they waver and go back and forth and not taking ransom and then the, the taking booty was permissible after that. All of this is nonsense. This has nothing to do with any of permissible of booty and not permissible of booty because in and Falala said after that, after this not befitting to take prisoners for and so on. And then after that, yeah, he, he said, whatever, what you have taken as a ghanima now, you are permitted. Ghanima is the meaning of the ransom. That's the meaning of the ransom here. Yeah. But they didn't understand that the other ghanima, then take it halal tayyiba, no problem. He allowed, said, now he allowed Ghanima. That's all not true. And Ghanima was allowed that. The issue was that the Ghanima coming from ransoming those who should have been killed. That's the one who says, Allah said, Kulu halal and I have permitted that to you, but I have admonished you and I will punish you for that, what you did before, and for your bad advice to your messenger, what's happened in Uhud. Anyway, and you find this, this wavering and the confusion in Tabari and in most uh, book of Tafsir. Uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, even uh, when, when I think Tabari asks, uh, but how can Allah admonish them uh, about uh, something which no revelation has come before? And he wavered and tried to find a solution without not finding a solution because un unlucky to him, did not uh, was not acquainted with this narrative and the story of what happened in Right Badr. He did not read it correctly or did not, not get the, the full story and in details. If you get the full story, then everything is clear like uh, the daylight. The whole. Uh, the whole admonishment in, in Surah Al-Anfal is related to taking uh, the booty, the part of the booty of, uh, of, uh, of taking uh, the ransom, because the ransom is a booty. And uh, that, that, that one, that, that the one who should, the, the issue was, was there and the discussion about it was there. There are other issues of this, uh, the other booty and how to distribute it. And the fifth, I said, that's another issue. But that one is the one which was the, the admonishment. And Allah said, okay, I'm allowing you that for that specific one to be taken halal and tayyiban. But originally you should not have done it and you have and, and you have already punished by, uh, uh, appropriately as explained in the hadith and this uh, uh, situation of the battle of Ahud. So that's one of the pairs of Allah SWT that he may know those who are sincere believer and their, their belief is firm after the calamity, because this will now just need that depend upon an act of free will, which the, its result impossible to predict before. It's impossible. It's not knowable to anybody and does not undermine Allah omniscience at all. And, uh, and, uh, and also he want to adopt from you matters in this ayah doesn't mention that the matter are conversation for better, but it's irrelevant. He, had, he, has a, he accepted the dua of the messenger of Allah and made the matter and he's taking them now. That's it. Allah does not love the wrong dua. Second, <coughs> that God might render pure of all the pure of all dross of those who have attained to faith and bring to naught those who deny the truth. Next translation. So God can test the believers and un in annihilate the disbelievers. Okay, you is more just as test. You is, is testing and cleaning. That if you if you have, for example, an ore and you do tamhis, you test it and then you clean it and, uh, and, and purify it. So it's both testing is resulting in purification and cleaning. So the true believer by this calamity, they are tested and also cleaned. And, and, uh, and forgiven because of the pain and the suffering. So it is, it's not just pure testing, but more uh, testing resulting in, in cleaning. But for the disbeliever or munafiq, clean and the kuffa, they will be annihilated. I'm happy to know a question. So Alice Tinkali says, uh, did, did you think that, uh, that you will get uh, this is a, uh, which kind of mind you have if you think that I'm happy to want to jannah to Allah, Maya Lamilla, Ladina, Jahadu Minkum, Maya Lama Sabirin. Do you think that you could enter paradise unless God takes cognizance of your having striven hard in his cause and takes cognizance of your having been patient in adversity? Next translation. Or do you suppose that you will enter the heavenly garden while God has not yet made evident those among you who struggled and made evident those who endure? 
here, here that translates second one, even like a first one caved against the, the fear of uh, using the word Ya'lam. But the word, uh, do, do, you, do, you, do you expect to enter paradise because before Allah knows who are the Muhab indeed did jihad in, in his sake and the do, those who have been proven to be patient? And this will be only known after the fact, not before. But they were afraid of this point. And they will be has beaten uh, around the bush and instead of Ya'lam, they said Allah made evident. No, Allah, Allah is not going to make it. Allah has to know after the testing. So that's that's the way they try to escape the issue of the divine foreknowledge and uh, its relation to uh, voluntary acts. But there's no escape. Uh, the other eyes in the Quran settled the issue against all of these these uh, fatalistic theories completely. But that's uh, we discussed, I think, that and we'll discuss it inshallah more formally in the uh, in the um, uh, in, in the uh, in the clubhouse in uh, rational theism, in due course. I mentioned exactly that what the Quran says exactly with these words specifically is that exactly what the rational necessity dictate, and there's no other escape of that. There's no other resolution of the problem. So, did you think that your enterprise without this have been tested and known to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? No. If you have think that you are wrong in thinking, you have to be tested and you have to prove that you are sincere believer and that you are, well, are really well, uh, doing the necessary jihad required from you and that you are really sabirin, not before declaring that you are like that. Anyone can declare, but is it true? How do you have the will to stand to that after the calamity? That can be only become apparent after the calamity and become known after before that it doesn't exist. It's unknowable, it's impossible to know. Another rebuke. Translate this one. For it did. You did long for death in God's cause before you came face to face with it. And now you have seen it with your own eyes. Next translation. You desired death in God's cause before you encountered it. Now, now you have seen it with your own eyes. Because many of people say, oh, we wish the jihad will come so that we, 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 we martyr, become martyrs. That's all uh, wishing for something which you, don't, you did not experience and see face to face. And, uh, and most likely is, is coming, is expressing some kind of a, of a deep seated self righteousness and justification that we will be facing death and we'll be able to do it without any problem. No, no problem. We are, we are, the, we are the, bug, the strong one with the vicious one. We are not going to run away. All of these things the, uh, you, you may tell yourself, or the devil may tell you, blow your pro, yourself beside proportion. Allah said, no, be humble. No, no, no. You are wishing that. Now we have seen death eye to eye, <laughs> as if death can be seen. Obviously, death itself. But you see the you see the other army. You see the arrows. You see the sword. You see the spears. That's essentially representing that. With, with now you have met it face to face with your own eyes. Now you should take a lesson for that. You should never wish for death. You should never blow yourself out of proportion that well, we wish the battlefield will be the battlefield and that we fight the enemy. Don't ever wish. And that's the, the reason the Messenger said, don't wish for meeting the enemy and ask Allah for, for a brief and for safety. But if it happens and there's no escape from meeting them, done. Be firm and be known and know that the, the paradise is under the shadows of the sword. Know that, and in, but don't wish, don't wish, don't don't be a warmonger. Warmonger is usually those who have some minority uh, complex, which is uh, express itself in self rightness and blow blow out proportion of the end. Uh, this is not a good sign. A good sign is uh, maybe maybe no, there will be no confrontation. Let us look for peace. Let us look for Islam settlement. But if it happens, that is no recourse, and the other side is 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 oppressive and insisting on fight, insisting on, 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 on viciousness, then be firm. And know when, when you face death, uh, death face to face, it looks very, 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 very deadly and very, uh, very, very uh, uh, terrifying, but the paradise is under the shadow of the sword. That's the, these, these weapons which look deadly, they are really hiding you, just, just a shield from you from the paradise. If you know that, then you can and, 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 and uh, uh, comprehend it and pre prepare yourself before that by being asking Allah that there will be no, for, no for confrontation, no war. Show this humility. Allah will give you the strength. When the confrontation happens, you will have an extra strength from Allah because you were humble and not 
not having a blow of proportion, doing self-righteousness and tazkia. Don't do this tazkia. Don't, don't fall in this trap. This is a satanic trap. This is a satanic trap. Don't be ho ho gang ho. That's not that's not the way a, a true believer. The true believer know how the universe works, and know that facing death is is, is a bitter and, uh, and difficult task, and he's humble and recognize that. Then, when he faces really death, because of this attitude, the whole make up make him have more capability of sabr, and maybe miraculously Allah will instigate and inspire him with more sabr in a way which we cannot physically conceive and receive. Sometimes even with with the with phenomena, external phenomena, which you don't regard as 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 uh, you, you don't regard as miraculous, but really they are miraculous in some sense. Like for example, in Badr, in Badr there was a rain, which first firmed the ground, so the ground became firm because the sand would die. if it if it is wet overnight, then it becomes firm and you can step better than uh, the loose sand. Secondly, uh, it, it it cooled them down. Pure, uh, wash their bodies, and uh, uh, that cooling down was so that that they they were they were fighting against sleep. They were almost sleep. They were nodding almost. The enemies informed that they are nodding, and this is a state of internal tranquility that you even almost going to sleep in front of the enemy. What is that? That's not now normal. But someone could say is induced by the coldness of the rain. It has a physical explanation. Okay, fine. I would say this is miraculous. That's not that's not a normal state of affairs. Facing a vicious enemy and then you're going to nodding and sleeping. That's, that, that does not now sound uh, rational and reasonable. Anyway, but that's because the majority, when we're going to battle, they were really afraid and they were they didn't want to go to the battle because they were initially they went out to get a caravan and then they were and when the consultation was made, should we go to meet the army because the caravan we have missed the caravan has escaped. They, most of them said, no, 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 we don't want. Uh, we went for the caravan. Uh, we are not able to face the army. That situation, that fear, and that humility is that what make them victorious and better. And you know, it was the opposite. They were arrogant and have gang go, and that's what made them partly of that what made them fail. So don't ever be a gang ho and a warmonger. That usually ends with someone being uh, being left alone by Allah Taala and forsaken to his own devices. He may succeed, he may fail. Allah doesn't care about him very much then. And then obviously there was a, the famous rumor in Uhud that Muhammad was killed. And then some, some people, when they heard he was killed, they just throw it over and say, what? And others said to him, okay, if he's killed, he's the messenger of Allah, and he brought the message, then fight in the same principle. You believe he's a messenger. We're fighting because he's the messenger, not because he's a nice black eyes. No, because he's the messenger. So if he's killed, became a martyr, let's fight in the same cause he was fought. So there was this camp and this camp. And Allah gave them a general education. That's part of the education of Wahad. Wa Muhammadun illa Rasulun qad khalat min qabliha al-Rusul. Afa imma ta'u qutilan qalabtum ala aqabikum. Faman yanqalib ala aqibay, falan yadur Allah shay'an wa sayajzil lahu al-shakirin. And Muhammad is only an apostle. All the other apostles have passed away before him. If then he dies or is slain, will you turn about on your heels? But he that turns about on his heels can in no wise harm God. Whereas God will re requite all those who are grateful to him. Yeah. Next translation. Muhammad is only a messenger. Other messengers have passed before him, passed away before him. If he dies or is killed, will you turn back? For who whoever turns back will not hurt God at all. God will reward those who give thanks. So this is very clear. This is the messenger, like any other messengers, messenger for him have passed away. All kinds of ways, some more got killed, some got murdered, some that were assassinated, whatever. So if this messenger dies, which will inevitably going to happen, the Quran says, oh, in Mecca, in Mecca, there's no escape, or get slain, no difference. Are you going to, to, to turn back on your heels? This is obviously a question which is, you should not do that. Beware of doing that. But if someone does that, then he will not harm. Don't think this will harm Allah SWT. No, absolutely. Allah, kingdom and sovereignty will not touch by even a dot. Nothing will happen to Allah SWT. All that will happen is that to the one who turned on his heel, that one has destroyed himself. But the one who did not turn on his heel, Allah will reward uh, plenty those who are thankful, those who are appreciating, of, uh, appreciating for it, appreciating that they have, have a messenger between them and this messenger was fighting with them, even was murdered. 
this is a great, this is a great version. The majority of human beings from beginning from Adam all the way to the end, the majority did not have this opportunity. Almost every human being in the world did not have the opportunity to become a comedy of a messenger and witness his death or his martyrdom. Only few lucky and So if you are lucky ones and you still persist and know that is now our job to continue the mission and carry the message of the messenger and complete and continue with his job, then the and, uh, an appreciation of Allah virtue on you, you specific group of people, then Allah will reward these enormously. So you love Shakri. And then the general principle, which is very clear. وما كان لنفس ان تموت الا باذن الله كتابا مؤجلا وما يريد ثواب الدنيا نؤتيه منها وما يريد ثواب الاخره نؤتيه منها وسنجزي الشاكرين. وسعيد. And no human, no human being can die save by God's leave at a time, at a term preordained. And if one desires the rewards of this world, we shall grant him thereof. And if one desires the rewards of life to come, of the life to come, we shall grant him thereof, and we shall requite those who are grateful to us. Next translation, no soul can die without God's pre, uh, permission at a predetermined time. We will give rewards in this world to whoever wants them, and rewards in the era, hereafter to whomever wants them. We will reward those who give thanks. Yeah, so again here, the, the both of us are struggling with the word kitaban, Mu'ajjah. Kitaban is something decreed and definitely going to happen. That's that is inevitable. Mu'ajjalan postponed. It's not a decreed, it's not kitaban mu'ajjalan, kitaban decreed to a certain time. No, it is kitaban, but it's postponed. It is not, actually it means postponed mu'ajjalan to a future point which is not necessarily determined. Maybe determined, maybe not. So that all the translation I cannot get away from the, from the fiction that, that uh, the future events are, are, are already predetermined and hence uh, everything is necessary and we have the so-called uh, Abdullah Lax know what, what I mean so-called uh, and Osfarashi attended to the modality collapse uh, in, in the clubhouse or was it in discord you know, in one of them uh, that's 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 a wrong reading the kitaban mu'ajjalan a definite a, a definite the, 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 uh, a, a definite decree that death is inevitable that's I mean kitaban that's written the system of the universe that's definitely fixed and escapable until the end of time. And the next life, the next life, the same is different. It's not that it's not, not a, there's no kitab of this type that, that then. And but this kitab is not immediate and not is more and it postponed. It may be the kitab for the individual person is, is will be done in the future. Not now. But the system, if it will be sold to die until Yom al Qiyamah, that's a system in the universe is inevitable. So that's a correct translation. Again, they could not deal with that, and they did it uh, at a uh, 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 decree to a fixed time. This is not does not the word kitab ajla does not mean that means it is a, it's a fixed. In in generality, as a matter of principle, every soul now it, it, because we talk no no soul can die except the permission of Allah Subhanahu definitely, but death is inevitable. This is kitaban. To which time is it fixed? No, it's muajla. It's postponed, and this postponed can. Uh, can, can be can be open in the future. The moment it's postponed, it's in the future, and the future is not necessarily determined completely with, with the current moment. So you see how how even such fine points in translation can be influenced by by your point of view about qadr and so on. But linguistically, there's nothing warranting that it's this kitab is is being written in the time past, or even at the creation of service and earth, and the execution is the, the usual reading is that the kitab it's the, it's the, is written and fixed. In time past, maybe the beginning of the of the universe, and the 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 execution is postponed to its uh, to its due time. That's a reading, but this reading is wrong. There's nothing in the ayah which relates to that reading. This kitab and this kitab. If you mean general the inevitable of death, that's kitab from the beginning of the universe. That's clear. That the system is fixed this way. Anyway, if you mean for this individual person, person which we thought was this soul which has died with the permission with the permission, with the permission of Allah, then that uh, that uh, the decision for that is 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 valid to a certain time and maybe maybe may may have happened in the past now in the future and it, in that decision it has its own it has its own possible postponement a decision may be made someone should should uh, Allah make a decision that this guy will like for example these seventy in the case of Ahmed specifically these seventy has been chosen by Allah to be martyrs 
So these are going to go to the battle, whatever happens. And they're going to be murdered, whatever happens. That's the do complete dominance of Allah in the universe. But, the, but others in other battles, in other situations, it's not necessary. He may decree in a certain situation and postpone the execution, bending on certain condition, which may be postponed further. He may decree it later in the future. It's not decreed now. It's still open. All of that's possible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the power and the absolute sovereignty and freedom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was enshrined by other ayahs, which will enforce that and clarify it. And then that's, that's the general principle. So death is inevitable, ultimately, as a general principle. But it doesn't happen to any individual except the permission of Allah. It's not going to happen against Allah's permission. Allah must permit it there. Nothing in the universe, no happening, either with free will or without Allah. Even the action of, uh, by free will happens only when Allah permits you to choose, but he permits you to choose whatever you choose. Does not specify the choice itself. Otherwise, it's not a free, a free choice. Permission must be there. Without permission, cannot anything in the universe happen, whatever, even act of free will. But the permission of its appropriate type. That's it. This is for WWE. And then a comment on that. But this is this inevitable. Death will, uh, is inevitable as a general principle okay, until Yom Al Qiyamah is, is, is written in, in the Qadr. This is part of Qadr, but the part of the system. And the individual cases is part of the Qadr, which can be postponed and can be brought forward, backward, depending upon the decision and certain conditions, which may materialize, may not, in a very complex way. That whatever the situation, Whoever wants the, the reward of dunya, the booty and the money and the dunya, Allah will give him from that. That's clear. Because if you want the reward of dunya and you do the necessary activity, then the system in is so tuned that Allah will allow you to get some of it. No money. And whoever wants the thawab al-akhirah, also Allah will give from it. But the one who wants thawab al-akhirah, Allah will give him extra reward because he's the one who appreciating Allah's favor on him of, of having a message. And Allah favor him having the power of choice. Allah favor him by being created with capabilities. Allah favor him of her, or, or, or having a condition right, which allows him to, uh, to do more than others, etc. Allah will, pray, will, will, will reward these. these uh, uh, so this is, this is the issue of reward. But issue of death is inevitable in general. In individual cases, it is also inevitable, but it is written or decreed from case to case, maybe before the uh, before a certain incident, after a certain incident, it's a, a, a decree to a certain time, which may be postponed, which may be in the future, mu'ajjala, mu'ajjala in the future, delayed to the future. Next ayah, okay, this is just, just to, to, to give the people some, some encouragement and condolence. وَكَأَيَّ مِنْ نَبِيًّ قُتِلَ مَعَهُ أو in, in the other reading which you have, I think, قَاتَلَ مَعَهُ رِبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرٌ وَكَأَيَّ مِنْ نَبِيًّ قُتِلَ هُوَ in this story, it is قُتِلَ مَعَهُ رِبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرٌ فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ وَمَا ضَعْفُوا وَمَا اسْتَكَالُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ And how many a prophet has had to fight in God's course, followed by many God-devoted men, and they did not become faint of heart for all that they had to suffer in God's cause, and neither did they weaken nor did they abase themselves before the enemy, since God loved those who are patient in adversity. Next translation. Many prophets have fought with godly, with godly people by their side. They did not lose heart or weaken or surrender when suffering for God's cause. God loves those who endure. So the, this is the reading in Hafsu. The reading said, use the, the instead of, uh, here, here Duri says, Qutila, and this is Qatala. Uh, the, the reading of Hafs meaning that the uh, plenty of prophets have, have fought in, in the way of Allah and with him have, have been uh, uh, fighting uh, others, many, uh, who shall belong to Allah, Rabbani, or, uh, which is called in, 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 in Hebrew, Rabbani, the one who belongs to Allah, the Rabbani, uh, the one who is, is God devoted. And uh, that 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 said that they they fought with the messenger and the messenger fighting with them did not weaken their uh, 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 did, did, did not weaken their resolve or did weaken them because of that what has uh, affected them in the cause of Allah and they became, did not came weak and they did not surrender and give up even after the defeat and so on, they came back and fought Allah Allah loved those who are doing and patient um, the reading here is قتلة, which has also good sense uh, this is 
which may be maybe slightly more befitting for the situation in Uhud, and they assume that Muhammad has been killed. There are many prophets who have been killed, and with them others tribunal Kathir, and others who have survived, those who were killed with him, before they are killed, they definitely they did not, they did not allow them to become weak, nor uh, because, because they're fighting in the cause of Allah, no, they became uh, they became submissive or gave up and they showed endures. And the one who survived, because the Prophet has not been killed with every one of them, completely exterminated, the survivor did not also uh, uh, give up and became weak and so on. So whatever uh, reading you, you choose, it gives a good uh, a good side side of the, of the, of the meaning. Uh, I have the feeling that the Dori is more befitting because that was after the rule Muhammad was killed. Okay, assume he is being killed. And other with him was killed, were killed, definitely were other killed. So those who were killed and also the one who survived at least, what happened to them after the, the messenger, the, the prophet has been killed and with him uh, many uh, uh, God defrauded men? What happened for the one remaining behind them? Did they become weak? For, for that, what they suffered in the cause of Allah, because they're the killing of their own prophet and their own com companions and friends and relatives and, and brothers and, and uh, the other the one who were killed in the battle, that's definitely a calamity. This, it did not weak them because it's in the cause of Allah. And they didn't become weak and gave up and they did not surrender and accept uh, the defeat without any, any, any attempt to come back. No, no, it did not happen to them. So this is more befitting, a little bit more befitting to this situation. Allah loves those enduring and those patient ones. So this is the, the, the situation of the survivor, but the, the Prophet may have been killed and with him other devoted uh, uh, Rabbani, uh, devoted Rabbani Yun, plenty. Still for the remaining, but it was not a reason to, to feel the, the, to feel forsaken and weak because of that, what they suffered in the case of Allah. No, they became permanently weak. No, they decided to surrender and give up for good. It didn't happen. So take example on those previous nations. That's a good example to follow. Allah loves those who are enduring and patient. وَمَا كَانَ قَوْلُهُ وَمَا كَانَ قَوْلُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا غَفَرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا وَتَبِّتْ أَقَدَامَنَا وَنْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ and all that they said was this, O oh, our sustainer, forgive us our sins and lack of moderation in our doing, and make firm our steps and secure us against people who deny the truth. Next translation, what they said was, Lord, forgive us our sins and overindulgence, overindulgences and make our feet firm and save us from the unbelieving folk. So the response for the, for the loss of the Prophet and the, the, if we take the reading of the Dori or Allah, uh, by implication in the reading of Hafs, their response to this calamity, which contained a killing of a prophet and many devoted men, is they said, that must have been gaps in ourselves and shortcomings from our side. Not, nothing, Allah is not to blame for that. What they said, said, O oh, our Lord, forgive us our sins and our indulgence in the affairs. We were maybe indulging too much in dunya, maybe we were indulging too much in, 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 uh, in, uh, uh, in other things which we should not have indulged in. Uh, even, even excessive in halal, but most likely indulging in haram and things like that. And instead, forgive all of that and firm our feet and give us victory over the disbeliever, those who reject the truth. So the response of those, uh, the, the patient one, the enduring of inshallah love, is that they said they attributed the failure and the problem to themselves. They did not blame Allah Sala. You are to blame. How can you have let us down and forsaken us? They say there must be some problem. We must have some gaps. There's some issue in ourselves. There's some defects. So he let us ask forgiveness for that. Stop the stop continuing with this. Asking forgiveness does not make any sense. If we continue with the sin, let us stop in that. Clean our, our ranks. Ask Allah to firm our feet and give us victory to this believer. So we are coming back. We are not, we're not surrendering. We are not giving up for eternity, you know, we are coming back. We are going to do the correction, cleaning the ranks, rearrange the, 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 uh, uh, the troops, and then come back and ask Allah for, for our fees and support and, and the victory against the disbeliever. And what's the response of Allah for such people with this attitude? Aha. فَأَتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ ثَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا وَحُسْنَ ثَوَابِ الْآخِرَةِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسَلِينَ One second. And all they said was, O oh, our sustainer, was this O oh, our sustainer? Forgive us our sins and the lack of moderation in doing our thing in, in, our, in our doings and make firm our steps. Oh, no, we already said that. Sorry. 
whereupon God, God granted them the rewards of this life as well as the goodliest rewards of this of the life to come. For God loves the doers of good. Next mm -hmm. translation. For God gave them rewards in this world and and best rewards in the life to come. God loves those who do good. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, both uh, not the the, the word, you have just the word fa, fa, at home. Based on that, as a conclusion, as a result, Allah gave them uh, the the reward of dunya. And the reward of dunya is usually wealth, booty, etc. So there's no need to distinct the best of that's what I can dunya have. And then the reward of akhira, the, the best one of it, which was the paradise, because there's a reward and akhira for bad deeds, which is the hellfire. So the, the Quran is very cautious and say, well, not the bad because the wabil akhira can be both applied to the good one. In akhira, it is really separated. In dunya, the wabil dunya is usually the good one. And it is never absolutely good. It will be a little mixed with problems. Even the booty and the wealthy will gain. It has certain aspects which may be a problem. It's never pure. But in Akhira, it is the, the pure one, the paradise, and the negative one piled together and discussed in the hellfire. So they will have the Husna Thawab al Akhira and Dunya, they get the Thawab al Dunya, which is money, wealth, etc., etc., whatever. Spoils of war, al Akhirah. Victory, victory is also a Thawab, is very nice. But it has a dangerous side. It may make you arrogant, may make you become gang ho, may become looked down on others, make you forget that that the victory came from Allah, and you essentially you are barely deserving. It is only because we are supporting the deal of Allah, and then you may forget that and start thinking that you deserve it somehow because you have you know, blue eyes or black eyes or something like that. That's all. This is a satanic inspiration. So the victory turn then the thawab of victory, the, the, the victory may turn, uh, turn negative to you, may, may make you may make you worse than before. So they have to cautious. So the dunya is always mixed, it's never pure. Although in the majority of it, which comes from Allah, the majority is the goodness is there. So al akhirah is the one because the good one is pure, absolutely none, no negative in it whatsoever. And Allah loves those who do well, the, 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 the well doer, the, well, the good doer, the well doer. Then, yeah, so we have some time. Then an injunction concerning something which happened during and after the battle, especially the, that Abdullah ibn Ibrahim Salud veered back with a third of the army, about 300. He said, no, oh, there will be no battle, I'll go back. He claims, so, but he wanted really to forsake and, and leave the Prophet for suffering, uh, defeat, and so on, on his own. And he protect himself by retreating back. No, this is related to a discussion which happened after the defeat and Abu, uh, uh, Abu uh, Sufyan uh, crying loud, uh, Hubal became supreme and they went to answer him, Allah is more supreme and things like that, related to the disbelief, not to the Mu'afiqeen. Yeah, the ones who believe and the ones who kafaru, they will be able to answer you, and they will be able to answer you. O you who have attained to faith, if you pay heed to those who are bent on denying the truth, they will cause you to turn back on your heels and you will be the losers. Yeah. Believers, if you obey the unbelievers, they will cause you to turn back from faith and you will become unbelievers. You will become yeah. losers, sorry. Become, become losers, yeah. That's very clear translation. So don't obey the disbeliever. What the reality is, there's, did the disbeliever, there's something specifically? Yes, they came and cry out, and cried out and say, now we have established that Hubal is high. And the message Allah ordered them to respond to him, Allah is higher and more supreme. And they say, we, uh, we, uh, we took revenge for that what happened as to Badr. This is a day like the other day. Is this a revenge? We are, we, are, we are now quit, so to say. And the message Allah ordered them to respond to him, this is not equal. Because the one who, uh, the one who died from you was in Badr and here, and the hellfire, and we are in paradise. So he's trying to do an intimidation to make them feel defeated and never think again to challenge Quraysh. That's what uh, and Allah said in this and other regards in every aspect, if you, if you listen to the disbeliever and obey them and accept their, their, uh, their, uh, their bluffs and their, their claims, uh, then they will turn you, they will, you will turn them because if you obey them, you will turn them. The only way you can obey them is by turning them to kufr and then you will become loser. So don't do that. In, yeah, let's say this one. Nay, but God is your Lord Supreme and His is the best succor. Next translation God is your protector and He is the best of all. Uh, Actually, Mawla is best translated in such a context is, is your ally, not only protector, protector and ally, protecting ally. 
and he's the best of uh, those who grant victory and, and succor. So, so uh, stick to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ignore the threats and the antics of the disbeliever, because they will be always making utterances to subdue and undermine you and make action which, which, which try to subdue and break your back. But don't bother about Allah is your ally. And stand firm and confront them uh, and continue confronting them. And ultimately, if you do that, Allah will respond with another in, in, in a proper way. What's the response? That's in the next ayah. سَنُلْقِ فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّعْبَ بِمَا أَشْرَقُ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَمَا لَهُمُ النَّارُ وَبِئْسَ مَثْوَ الظَّالِمِينَ Into the hearts of those who are bent on denying the truth, we shall cast dread in return for their ascribing divinity side by side with God to other beings, something for which he has never bestowed any warrant from on high, and their goal is the fire, and how evil that abode, that abode of evildoers. Next Amen. translation. We will strike panic into the hearts of the unbelievers. They attributed partners to God, for which he has never sent down any authority. Their dwelling is hell. What an awful dwelling for the unjust. Yeah. There are various issues. There. So there's, Allah promises that he will cast uh, dread, terror, fear, panic in the heart of the disbeliever why bima as a reward as a compensation as a payment back for that that they are serious for allah partners this means if you associate with allah partners then by necessity by necessity of the way the mind and the heart and the universe is created you will have a gap in your heart in which fear and terror will strike. Because the moment you have to associate with Allah's partner, your loyalty and devotion is to multiple masters. One of the partners may be like, like you say, you are fighting for the United States of America as a nation. That's a, how, how can you fight for, for a nation or a mountain or, or a river? You, you appointed him with the United States and this constitution as, 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 uh, as equal to Allah in matter of legislation and, and loyalty and, and belonging and allegiance. That's shirk, that's clear shirk. But this divided loyalty, because you have other loyalties, other beliefs, you have then a loyalty to yourself. You want to, to enrich yourself, you want, you want to save your skin. You, have, you, may, you may be a nominal Christian, you feel you have some loyalty to Christ. You have divided Lord, you don't know where you go. And that's the gap where then in the battlefield, then fear will come in your heart. So, but also there, there's a possibility that Allah will strike fear in a, in a metaphysical or a spiritual way, which we don't know, not only because the system has result automatically that the disbeliever having a divided heart, they don't have a center of, of, of reference and certain or a center of devotion, which makes you, because if you have a center, then you are, you are, you're holding to, to one clear center. You're rotating around the center, like the earth rotating around the sun. The moment you have multiple centers, then you are scattered. You don't know where you are rotating, to whom you belong. Naturally, the result, but it's in addition, Allah may do something metaphysical, spiritual, which you don't know, so that the, for those who are associated with Allah partner, but those, this association with Allah partner is a significant, uh, interesting, that's discussed in the book of Tarheed extensively. It says, hey, with the Surah Allah partners for whom Allah did not bring out down any authority. This may be if you read it at first, at the first look, it looks like if Allah made an authority to anybody, then you are okay to, to associate to associate with them Allah. No, that's not the correct thing. The correct thing is that these partners are impossibly impossibly capable of being partners because Allah will never, it's impossible for Allah to bring any authority for them. Because by being partner to Allah is a, is a, is impossible, is an impossibility, and there's no way any uh, uh, any any any, uh, any any authority of those will be revealed from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. In other words, those partners of Allah which they did adopted as as, as a sharik to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, their attribute is that for them it is impossible that Allah would have been ever give any authority or given evidence even standing. Because some 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 uh, some some religions and some philosophical claim uh, the other ones there is some kind of permission of Allah or authority given for Allah. No, it is not possible. It is rationally and revelation wise impossible that anyone one appointed by a partner of Allah could have even been having it. This is an attribute. It's an impossibility itself. So it's not that if Allah bring down an authority for someone, then you can adopt him partner beside Allah. That's impossible. This could never happen. But those partners are having this, this characteristic that they necessarily never could not and will never be able to be appointed as a partner to Allah. 
So there's no authority for them by necessity of reason, by necessity of the mere definition of being a, appointed a part of Allah SWT. So read it the correct way, not the wrong way. Not that is if there will be uh, an authority, then there's okay, it's a part of, no. There will never be an authority. It's impossible to have an authority for any part of it. It, 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 it negates and contradicts the necessity of reason. So it's not possible. That's not possible. And then ultimately, what's what the, 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 the dwelling, the ultimate dwelling for these disbelievers who, who associate with Allah partners, and they've got the, the, the fear stuck in the heart and deserve to getting that. They're, they're ultimately their uh, dwelling and the end result and the end, end, uh, end destination is the fire. That's their dwelling. They will end in the hellfire. Whatever in dunya happen, a temporary victory, long victory, no victory, whatever happens, it doesn't make any difference. Their, their end is the hellfire. And what a miserable abode for the, for the wrongdoer, for the unjust one. Now back to Uhud, self what has happened in Uhud, after all these general principles to lift the spirit of the world, if I say the shock of the defeat was major. Before that, they will never be defeated, especially in Badr, the victory was, was a rout. So now this defeat was a shock. Now, and there may be question because Allah promised that if you fight and endure and persevere and fight the correct way, Allah will give you victory. It seems to be Allah failed in his promise. It's not true. Allah did not fail in his promise, but you failed in your in your behavior. So the next one, I think we can't get this one. I will get one of the next one. وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ إِتْحُسُّونَهُ بِإِذْنِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا فَشِلْتُمْ وَتَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرُ وَعَصَيْتُمْ بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ مِنْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةَ ثُمَّ صَرَفَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ لِيَبْتَلِيَكُمْ وَلَقَدْ عَفَا عَنْكُمْ وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Translate. And indeed, and indeed God made good his promise unto you when by his leave you were about to destroy your foes until the moment when you lost heart and acted contrary to the Prophet's command and disobeyed after he had brought you within view of that victory for which you were longing. They were among you such as cared for this life this world alone, just as they were among you, such as cared for the life to come. Whereupon, in order that he might put you to a test, he prevented you from defeating your foes. But now he has effaced your sin, for God is limitless in his bounty unto the believers. Next translation. God has fulfilled his promise to you when, uh, when, uh, to you, when you, with his permission, were about to destroy your enemy. He showed you what you love, and then you failed disputed and disobeyed. Some of you long for this world and others long for the life to come. Then, in order that he might put you to a test, he kept you from winning. Then later he pardoned you. God is gracious towards the believers. So, so uh, uh, Allah turned turn, turn the argument against those who say Allah forsaken us. Now, actually, you, you did the problem and Allah has actually have forgiven you your, your failure. But the details of the following, we know the details in the battlefield by, by mutually corroborating narration is that uh, the Prophet designed the, the situation in the battlefield and recognized that with his back to Uhud, but there is a small valley uh, back behind Uhud in which the, the enemy could come. Uh, and this, the, the, this one, but the, this uh, encirclement can be prevented by having a group of uh, skilled archers on top of a small hill. This is known in Medina. If any one of you go to Hajj and Umrah, ask the people there in Medina to show you the mountain or the hill of the archers. It's well known. And this way, uh, the, uh, nobody will, will uh, even think about encircling because if they encircle the archer at the top of the hill and you have to pass below the archer, and they will annihilate you with, that, with the arrows. There's no way to go if the arrows are there. And then give them the following clear instruction. And uh, put Abdullah ibn, Jubair, ibn Jubair, I think, Abdullah ibn Jubair, a sahabi called Abdullah ibn Jubair, as a commander, and give him the following command. You persist here until I come and call you to come down. I personally, the Prophet says that. Even if you see the bears are eating us alive. I don't think you, you don't have any clearer instruction than that. Even until you see, even if you see the bears at least are alive. I promise you that I will be there and I will come until I ask you to come down. So, when she came, the Muslim attacked them. They were first, I think, I think they were first uh, personal duels, like in the classical tradition of wars in time past. Uh, each army asked, I think, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't remember reading that in this year, but this is the standard, like in Uhud or in Badr, there was a duel 
a person comes out, oh, fight me. That's just a classical style of wars in time past. Now, obviously, with modern, modern war, 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 warfare, duels have been extinct. They don't make any sense. But in time, it was, it was essential. Anyway, after that, Muslim charged. The station came with Muslim charged, and they almost routed the enemy. They routed the enemy considerably, and they start running. Even one said, I saw, I saw Hind bint, Abi, uh, bint Utba running. With her, uh, with her, what's the name of the, the, the jewelry you put in your feet? What's his name? Uh, help me. The jewelry we put in the feet. Ankle bracelets or something? Not bracelets, it's called anklets. Anklets? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, anklets. And so her ankle is striking against each other and she's running, we're lifting the headrest so that her legs are apparent because she's running at maximum speed away. And it was clear that, that they are routed and the Croatia were started to the Croatia army started to disintegrate and so on. Now, the arch on top of the mountain, they said the battle is over, some of them. And our brothers are starting to collect booty. We missed the booty. Let's go down and have the booty. That's the dunya. Have the booty. Abdullah Bijar told them, the Messenger Allah said, You don't go and even if you see the bird eating us, don't worry about the booty. Wait until the Messenger Allah asks us to come down. Your booty is, is reserved. You will get your share of booty. They don't listen to him, and the majority of them run down to collect booties. That's the way the Arabs are indisciplined in Jahiliya. They did not overcome it yet, even if that the group there of the best of the Sahaba and the one who the Badri are present and people who are Sabiqin Awaleen who have promised paradise. Despite still the, between them, there's some munafiq and there's some weak of Iman. The majority of munafiq retreated to Abdullah ibn Ubay anyway, went back to the Medina anyway. So, but uh, you cannot exclude there's one or two munafiq that are them. Khalid was with, with a group of, of uh, horse, uh, of knights, of horse riders. He's watching the battlefield like a hawk, you know, Khalid ibn Walid, one of the best commanders and military men in history. And he noticed that the protection of the back of the Muslim on top of the mountain have been thinned out. They considered that he saw them running down to collect the booty. And Abdullah ibn Jair is left with a few men. I don't know how many said in, in Syria. Any few, not enough to, to give the Sisi cover. So he took his, his horsemen, encircled behind Uhud, and attacked the mountain first, killed Abdullah ibn Jair and the people around him, and then attacked the Muslim in the back. With the back, back attack, the Muslim, the, 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 the Muslim army got confused. They don't know who is attacking front and back, and they were even killing each other. One of the ones who killed by Muslims, by mistake, is the father of Hulayf al Yaman. And the Hulayf told him, Brothers, believe that this is my father. But before they recognized what's going on, because they lost their mind, they were state of confusion, they killed his father. And later on, after the battle, he, he, he forgave the Muslim and did not ask for a diya. He was, he was entitled for a diya, and the Prophet praised him for that. He's one of the Sabiqir only Mahajiri Ansar, Hulayvan, his father, Al Yaman. So it's station could completely messed up. In this mess up, also Hamza got, got assassinated, essentially killed, because nobody could kill him face to face. Uh, uh, Wahshi uh, threw him with a spear and killed him. And Hind, who she was running away for her life, came back and, and mutilated him. And the situation became absolutely messy. And the Prophet with a few Sahabi were forced to go up the mountain to seek protection in some caves and the protection of the high ground so that they can't throw sword stones. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, the, a few Ansari were together with the Messenger of Allah and they, they were defending and fighting the, uh, some of the Mushrikeen in Kerjan by foot because I think the place was un inaccessible for horses. So they're coming by foot. And the Prophet said, who will protect us from us? One Ansari fought and until he killed that second, until 10 Ansari were killed. Just protect them, say that Allah. And the Messiah say, we did not do justice to our to our partners. They are killed for us, and nobody of us is doing that. And then until ultimately the Mushrikeen retreated and they saw that uh, the, the army was able, the Muslim army was able to organize itself somehow. We don't have, I think, if I remember correctly, not enough details in the in the in the sea in the Sira how they were able. I think they were retreated to the mountain and then by being a little bit in the high ground, Abu Sufyan decided it is now we have enough killed of them and going up the mountain is, is not possible. But I think all of them were now in the mountain, essentially. And there was a various options. So Abu Sufyan wanted to check, check the dead. He didn't find Muhammad nor Abu Bakr nor Abu Adr, manager personality. So he said, uh, for those in the mountain, uh, and the messenger of Allah told them, don't answer him. He said, 
Is Muhammad with you there? Up. Nobody answered because by order of the messenger of Allah. I said, this one is killed. We got rid of him. Alhamdulillah. Thanks, Hobal, or, or, or Lat, or whatever the date he believes in. And then he said, Is Abu Bakr under you? He said, Don't answer him. He said, They didn't answer. And then, Is Umar under you? He said, no, the, We killed all these three. The people are finished, gone. And then Umar could not say that, but all of them are alive and you are cursed. <laughs> I could not control himself. And then he said, Okay, no problem. Uh, you have survived this. This day is in, in exchange for the day of Badr. Why am I on Badr? And you will see because he felt really uh, he felt that there would be a major blame because it's it's, it's, a, it's a scandal to mutilate your enemy in the Arabic tradition, which did not mutilate you. So he said, you will see uh, some some mutilation in in the dead bodies. I did not command it, but I did not reject it. So I neutral. It happened without my command, and I'm accepting the result. And he went. He retreated. Went far away. Maybe one day or two days tra travel. For, they the consultant discussed. I said, we, "We must have been our decision was completely stupid and unreasonable. How come that we did not route them completely? We should have stayed in the bottom of the mountain and then uh, and wait for them to come down or go up until they, we annihilate them. So it would have been feasible. Let's go back. And this is the story was commented uh, uh, in, in the in the surah after that. But this is later." And then after the treaty, it was clear that they cleared the area of Medina and there's no danger of counterattack. A person came down and there was the burial of the dead and all of these issues related to lengthy stories, painful stories, and the mutilation of Hamza, etc., etc. And uh, and, uh, uh, and and uh, the feeling of uh, demoralized and defeated, etc. All of that was happening, and uh, the, and uh, and, uh, and uh, some people. Of weak faith, of weak understanding of what's going in the universe, thought that Allah did not fulfill His promise. But indeed, Allah fulfilled it. You almost annihilated the people, and but when we're almost about to exterminate them completely because they were running away, they were they were already in the run, they were in the teeth. Instead of obeying the messenger and st stand firm on the top of the mountain and obey your local commander Abdullah ibn Jubair radiyallahu an, you disputed with him and discussed with him and show which is there's is nothing to discuss. He has the commanding power. He's the only one who can allow, and he has the instruction of Messenger Allah, he and you also, not to go down or move. And even if you see the Messenger himself being eaten by the bird alive, what do you want more uh, like that? So they disputed with him, disobeyed him. Then the tide of the battle turned. How it turned? By, by Khalid watching this situation at the top of the, of the Archer Hill. Maybe he watched it by, by, by nature because his nature as a military commander, a skilled commander to look around. Maybe Allah turned his head in that direction to see that so that he can hand to those disobedient and disputing people uh, the punishment they deserve. Yes, the punishment was the defeat for them. Some of them got, got killed, but the one on the mountain achieved martyrdom. And the rest of us have got a harsh lesson. And the reason for that, the deep reason for that was the deep reason. I mean, uh, so after you have seen what you love, victory, clear victory, or almost out of the enemy, you fail to stick to the principles. And some of them of you wanted dunya, wanted booty, became more important than obedience to Allah and his messenger at that moment. You failed. That's the fundamental failure. That's the, the, the whole failure come from the, some of the Arshad or the majority of the Arshad wanted booty. They don't want to wait until the booty is divided later and giving to everyone his share appropriately. No, they don't want, they want to go down and participate in, in the route. And that's what God was they're undoing. And Allah deliberately make things so that they, that they, they to turn, that they turn against you so that you will be tested. And the murders which were are, are arranged for and agreed upon in Badr will be taken, etc. But despite of this failure, which is, uh, and the disobedience and the dispute to the commander on the villa, Allah has forgiven you that. Now we turn you against you. Against those claim Allah for saying, no, no, then for a second. You, you committed a sin. You committed a blunder. Nevertheless, Allah forgiving you that blunder. Allah has forgiven that. You didn't deserve your forgiveness for that, but Allah for, has forgiven it out of his generosity. And Allah is having favor on the believer. So that's, and the description, but after that, what happened? تصعدون ولا تلون على أحد والرسول في أخرى في أخرى يدعوكم في أخراكم 
فأثابكم غما بغم لك لا تحزنوا على ما فاتكم ولا ما أصابكم والله بما تعمل الله خبير بما تعمل yeah. Remember the time when you fled paying no heed to anyone while at your rear the apostle was calling out to you, calling out to you. wherefore he requited you with woe in return for the apostle's woe so that you should not grieve merely over what had escaped you nor over what had befallen you for God is aware of all that you do next translation and you fled up the mountains not listening to anyone even as the messenger was calling out to you from behind God afflict, afflicted you with arrows uh, with with sorrow upon sorrow God has now forgiven you so that you should not so that you would not grieve over what you missed or what happened to you God is well aware of what you do um, in the first the sorrow on terror or the multiple sorrow sorrow is that the first gum and become or, or depression uh, by depression the, the letter B could be a reward. He, 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 he caused you to have gum, sorrow, and depression as a punishment for the depression and gum you caused your messenger. That's one album. And other says gum after gum. Gum is here than just like, like accumulation of gum. Whatever it is, it is it's clear that it will remind him that we were running in, in the phase of the battle before the messenger went to the mountain. Those who are becoming like headless, the headless chicken just started taking escape into which is the natural reaction taking escape into the mountain and although the messenger is calling them to organize them alliance and continue the battle they even were unable to listen anything and continue to the mountain then after that the messenger that continued in the mountain but there was no other way to do except just to take refuge there until and then uh, and hold hold the army of Quraysh in check so that they they rewarded. By the way, in, in, in the, the Quran says that you don't turn you don't turn back or listen to anybody. Ahad. I think there may be a singular reading. I, I have to check the various readings of the Quran, but it's neither the half reading nor this reading is that they may be uh, uhud. It could be read as uhud that you are not turning to anybody who are you are running up on uhud on the mountain of uhud. It may be like that. So it may be the name of the mountain is mentioned here. But it, if it is, it may be a singular reading. I don't think it's one of the famous seven or ten reading, but I have to check this point. It will be interesting. But there's a possibility to read that uh, uh, that you are going up, not turning to anybody, going up where? On the mountain of uhud. That's, that's a possible reading. Whatever, the general reading is that you are not, you are not turning or giving head to anybody. So anybody or Uhud, Ahad or Uhud. And the messenger is behind you. He did not he did not run ahead of you up the mountain. He was the last one to get up the mountain. Call you to stop and organize yourself, but he did not listen. And this you caused him obviously grief and sorrow because of your behavior, both in the top of the mountain, which led to the calamity. And then after that, when not listening and being like headless chicken running up the mountain. So he rewarded you uh, grief and, and, and depression and sorrow for the grief and sorrow and the, the, that you cause your messenger. And the whole, whole conclusion and the result of all this, uh, this, this calamity is that, uh, that you learn not to grieve for that what has been passed because it has been passed. Does not mean that you don't grieve for the past and, and start lamenting that you don't study it and learn from it. And there's a hadith say, if, if you are here, do your best and uh, prepare and do the best what you can, for what you, do you think it will benefit you? So you plan and do the work properly. But if you fail, then don't start lamenting and say, uh, if I did that, I did that. But say, Qadr Allah This is the Qadr, it has happened. Allah has decided to happen, and it has happened. We cannot change the past. But does not mean that you don't study it. Many people misunderstand it, that, uh, misunderstand it, that you don't study what has happened and analyze it. What was the reason of the field? What's prohibited is to indulge in lamentation. That's what prohibited. But the indulgent analysis and discussing it and see the reasons for the failure, what is, and then to avoid it in the future, not for lamentation, but to learn from it. That's this is not only desirable, but obviously the Quran is giving clear instruction when he tells them what we have done. That's what we have done, what they did. So studying things like that and learning from them is mandatory without any doubt. But lamenting and turning it into, into, into a lamentation campaign. Is, is, is undesirable. Uh, actually, it shows the distrust in Allah Qadha, and Qadr. It has, has happened already. Under those conditions, it has happened. What were the condition? Can be they modified in the future? That's, that's study. That's not lamentation. So that's you should not grieve for that what has happened before.
and which you have missed before. You have missed victory. Don't grieve about that. You have you have suffered casualties and, and even mutilation in Hamza. Don't grieve about that. It's happened and gone. Does not negate that you learn from the whole situation, why it happened this way, and how could be such a calamity avoided in the future if it is at all avoidable. Sometimes it's not avoidable, but you can study it objectively. That's something else. Not lamentation, not grieving, studying, analyzing. Wallahu khabiru my Allah is expert of that what you are doing. I think, Rash, do we have more time or? It's up to you. We got time. It's up to you. Let me see. I think it's a lengthy sentence about grieving and analyzing events in the past and Qadr, and it may be desirable to uh, uh, rest, uh, to, to start next time with the, with the same ayah, we just repeat it quickly, and then from Istos Iduna or Atalwun, repeat it just in two minutes, and then we continue, because it belongs to a block, which is how to deal with such a calamity and how to avoid uh, a lamentation attitude without losing sight for learning the lessons and analyzing things objectively, not in a grieving way, but in an in a analytical learning way and studying way and taking taking lesson away. Yeah, so we we'll leave it for next time, inshallah. No which number it is? So, As we start at it, it we repeat that just for two minutes and then we continue. Okay, in that case, for next week, we'll start with, uh, remember the time, which is uh, uh, 153, and then we continue with the yeah. length. Yeah, yeah. It's the same number I have here, 153, yeah. Okay. Any question? Not uh, any question uh, except about Qadr and so on, because we have to we address that in previously. Maybe you remember the number of the halaqa, and we addressed it in separate issues, I think, with the English speaker in a short one, and we'll have some more extensive writing and maybe some more fair discussion from a philosophical point of view in the uh, rational theism uh, clubhouse later. Not next week, or not even the week after, because just we have to prepare things like that and show that it's it's it is a rational, compelling case for uh, for a certain theory of color, which is not uh, the one which is usually propagated by Ashari or even by support Sunni Salafi and so on. Uh, nobody propagates. Even time you propagate a mixed thing which is not consistent and not proper, we'll clarify that inshallah in due course.